Okay. Gotta love it. You gotta love, you gotta love noise. Unnecessary noise made by the fucking cats around here. But it is our Halloween, All Souls Day, and Day of the Dead, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> Special show. Excuse me. Now, of course, the uh, black and white Sylvester looking cat, Steve, did not make a sound when we were off the air. Of course, he has to start meowing now. You know, cats, you know, witches, familiars, you know how it is. Ooh. Welcome to um, Progressive Discussions. Um, we're coming to you from the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. I'm with my, uh, I am James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And I'm here with my uh, co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The uh, the one and only, the illustrious, uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this special Halloween 2017 show, sir? Um, we're we're going to have a very bad day tomorrow. I heard. Oh, uh, up to 50 mile an hour winds yes. and heavy rain here in the New York metropolitan area yes. where we're in northeastern New Jersey. So, would you shut up? I let him go. Anyway, seven right, lucky well. bells, and we need it for this special holiday show. <clears throat> seven lucky bells. Everything we discuss politically on this show is part of our series Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. I have to. I can't talk too fast in case we have any teabaggers watching the show. I got to keep it really simple. Yes, King ne King Neptune, you want to? You would like to stick your trident yeah. into that cat? Yeah, I know. That that this is what they call why they call them the witches' familiars. The witches' familiars. Uh, and this one is definitely being acting like a witch is familiar, to try to sabotage this special holiday show. Okay. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. Uh, we, um, we're finishing up Goose Island India Pale Ale craft mm -hmm. beer. And there is my bottle. And the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisen there is my cup. has his mug. Uh. And I definitely need a swig of this. Goose Island I was uh, introduced to Goose Island by the very, uh, by a goose. very good, no, no, not by a goose, <laughs> by the commercials, which I liked, and uh, I had my first Goose Island IPA on the uh, New York City Circle Line uh, boat tour hey. with my near dear friend from San Diego, California, Natalia, greetings Natalia, and happy since she is Latina, a Mexican American, she it, they do celebrate uh, All Souls Day and the Day of the Dead. Mm -hmm. I cannot pronounce it in Spanish, but you know what I mean. So, so I salute all of all Mexican Americans and people <coughs> in Mexico. Happy Day of the Dead, 2017. I read a banner that I couldn't believe that Donald Trump's son would say something idiotic, saying that that um, in 2016 um, he said, you know, the one that was that you saw on Celebrity Apprentice with the slick back brown hair, he said that Melania Trump is much more intelligent than Michelle Obama because you need brains to be a successful model. Yeah, right. Like a porno actress needs brains to be a successful porno actress. <laughs> Hold on. I have to ring I have to ring the levity bells on that one. That was really really too bizarre and too funny, which to me mm -hmm. it proves that the um 
the idiotic right-wing apple does not fall far from the tree. And I forgot to do something because of Steve. Steve, the plague on you and your and your ancestors. In, in the uh, in the words of Ed Norton from the Honeymooners. Excuse me. We're going to have to take uh, a tad bit earlier break because I don't know how much time elapsed uh, well, since uh, quite a few two three minutes yeah so you what like maybe 25 maybe more when it reaches 25 26 well I don't 25. want to push our luck but anyway yeah. <coughs> I got a couple of uh, political uh, coming from the Republican uh, New Jersey Republican for governor uh, candidate of course Here's one. Now, Bob Gordon is a Democrat, right? Okay. Yes. Career politician uh, Bob Gordon. This is uh, to bash Bob Gordon, okay? And then there's a photo of whatever. Let me read this. Career politician Bob Gordon. New Jersey students in the um, United States um, illegally to pay in-state tuition. New Jersey students in the U.S. illegally to pay in-state tuition. Career politician Bob Gordon, and excuse my voice, uh, there are <laughs> allergens in the air uh, today, uh, he voted to reduce college tuition for illegal immigrants while other New Jersey students and their parents are forced to pay more of course, Republicans always have to attack um, the so-called illegal immigrants, which are, as you well know, immigrants of color south of the border, because Republicans never complain about European immigrants. Okay? It's clear Bob Gordon is out of touch this election day. Vote him out of, of, of office. He's out of touch. Why? Because he's not all for the, for the elitists in the top 2%. Uh, white, lily white America. Okay. <laughs> um, and then here, okay. Um, does this sound uh, does it, does this sound fair to you about the so-called illegal immigrants? Okay. So, you know, what it comes what it comes down to is Republicans are only anti-immigration if you're of color. Number one. Number two. If they, if businesses in the United States can't hire you and pay you chicken feed mm -hmm. for a salary with no benefits. Aren't there other people there running with Bob? Well, I'm sure there's uh, right down the Republican line. There's a whole bunch of them. Bob is a Democrat. Oh, Bob, I'm sorry. Bob, yeah. Um, Phil Murphy is on a ticket, well, he's right? he's the governor, but I'm talking Bob and uh, Eustace and... Uh, Eustace and I don't uh, know. The woman, the woman, I forget her you name. You know, I, I can't remember. We have a lot of politicians in New Jersey with exotic last names. And I'm not a, a, I'm not a fan that of, lo, of local politics. Mm. I don't focus a lot on local politics. But I would say governor of New Jersey is pretty important. Mm -hmm. which is coming up this November 2017. Yeah. Which means Balloon Boy is going bye to bye. fill himself up. The balloon will fill himself up with helium and float away. But bye. we don't want the female... What the hell's her name? Geo Jim Lagdano. Yeah, we don't want a any Republican really to... Here we go again with the trash can. Oh, here we go. Too much. Just push it down. See what happens. And it's a hefty too. Oh, there, there we you go. go. Kelly Lang Schultz is backed by Christie's allies. Who? Oh, here's a lovely photo. <laughs> Ding dong! The witch is dead. The wicked witch. The witch is dead. Ding dong! The wi wicked. Now look who's, on the, other. Look who's on the other side. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Ah! 
There oh we go. Oh my God. Talk about puffy cheeks. Talk about the the um, the orange buffoon. Like uh, Michael Labar calls him. The, the, the <laughs> uh, okay. A pose. He, uh, uh, well, Kelly Langschultz is backed by Chris Christie allies who oppose equal pay for women, support dangerous cuts to women's health services, uh -huh. very true, uh, ran our state's economy into the ground, uh -huh. hey, not to mention cutting all the social services we used to have in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. There's no Section 8, by the way, rent subsidy for anyone, not even senior citizens. So, um, Kel uh, Lang Schultz even belongs to an extremist right-wing group hey. that has pushed despicable conspiracy theories about Barack Obama and spreads racism, homophobia, and sexism online. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, it's not becoming of a woman to be like this right-wing. They're supposed to be sugar and spice and everything nice. <laughs> Kelly Langshultz, wrong for our state, wrong for state senate. Trump's health care plan would force seniors to pay thousands more. Yeah, those seniors that have thousands more. <laughs> and kick half a million New Jerseyans off their health care coverage. Hey, the go. Republicans in Washington just kicked, uh, what is it, nine million children off of their health care, right? But Kelly Lang Schultz refuses to oppose Trump's dangerous plan to harm our health. Kelly Langschultz, wrong for our state, wrong for state senate. Here we go again. Wrong for New Jersey. Wrong for New Jersey. Uh, hey, don't forget, next November, people, the most important November to remember. That was actually clever of me, but pat myself on the back. 2018. Like Barry we Horowitz. Of we the don't year. even know who's running. Huh? 2018. We don't even know who's running. Yeah, the next November. But that's when many seats are up. Yes. In the, in the Senate in, and the House. In the Senate and the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. Social Security. Oh, a, a gentleman by the name of Tom from Passaic County, New Jersey, contacted me and told me something that pissed him off, and rightfully so. Social Security Administration. His question was, can someone who is collecting Social Security disability when they uh, become of age, can they also simultaneously collect Social Security retirement? No. It switches. N no. Not with scumbag Republicans at the helm. Guess what? They incorporate the Social Security disability and into the retirement and use it as an excuse to not give you the Social Security retirement that you paid into, America. You paid into it. I had a piece of thread there. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Still got it. Yeah, let's, let's not waste too much on? time on the fucking thread. Well, it's gone. Unless oh. it was a hair. Ah. Oh, so did you hear what I just said? There, people pay into Social Security to to uh, reap the fruits of you know, uh, and during uh, when they become what is it? Uh, Sixty-one and nine 65 months. Sixty-five. It was. No, 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 no. Yes, you, yes, you can yes. collect earlier for less money. Oh yes, but uh, who wants to do 61 that? Sixty-one years and nine months. Right. You cannot go any earlier than that. Right. But because of the fucking Republicans, if you're collecting Social Security disability, I'm raising my voice because my voice is raspy. Uh -huh. yeah, uh, they use, uh, the bastards are using that as an excuse to steal and to jip you out of your Social Security retirement if you collect disability, Social Security disability. So, to me, of course, the entire Republican Party, because <clears throat> it's, not, it's not just Donald Trump and Social Security Administration, you are hereby in the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. 
for chiseling something that is not an entitlement. A person should be able to collect Social Security disability and Social Security retirement when they become of age at the same time. Ooh. Because it's only fair because, like I said before, Social Security retirement and Medicare, from what I understand, are not entitlements. Steve, you better not unplug that plug. They, we pay a payroll tax for Social Security. Yeah, if you talk to uh, to ugly old uh, evil demons like uh, Mitch, Turtle Face Mitch McConnell, he pro right. he'll probably have a stupid excuse. Comes from the general funds. Yeah, yeah. Had, yeah. Just like uh, social services. According to a Republican and, and an inbred uh, redneck teabagger, they think social services make up the bulk yes. of the of the United States budget. Yeah. Cut those and no. you're saving money. Okay, here's uh, another inductee into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, and rightfully so. There's my sh Blackthorn shillelagh. GNC, Walmart... Walgreens and Ooh. Target were found to uh, to commit nutritional supplement fraud hey. when it comes to herbal supplements. They uh, they found cheap filler in the capsules mm. or tablets instead of the herbs that were posted on the label of these herbal supplements. In other words, they they were allowed to cheat the consumer. So shame on you. GNC, Walmart, which doesn't surprise me, Walgreens, which surprises me, and Target, which also surprises me. There you go, uh, there you go, uh, Americans. There's your uh, capitalism for you without regulations. Snake oil. Carnival hucksters. Back to snake oil. Back to snake oil. Yeah. This is what happens when you. Um, you go back in history to an America before FDR, before we had corporate regulations, uh -huh. like the times, um, the time that, um, co according to a very good documentary I watched last night, the time when um, Thomas Edison and J.P. Morgan screwed uh, a Nikola Tesla with his, with his, uh, the tower that he built. Mm -hmm. Free, free electricity. Electricity. For all! Did you know that, uh, I think it was during the 1940s, I could be wrong, did you know that the great uh, Nikola Tesla took a Pierce Arrow automobile and mm -hmm. converted it to total electric and it was, go it was flying at 90 miles an hour? Nikola wow. Tesla and, and the electric autom automobile first started in the 1920s? Tesla took yeah, a Pierce yeah. Arrow and did this, and he got, they just blew him off. They blew him off. Yeah. Well, he ended up ditch digging, Tesla, because they you, screwed him. He died in, in, uh, in a New York City, uh, in, a, in the Manhattan Hotel, there you living go. alone in a hotel room. Yeah. And as soon as he dropped dead, before any friends or family could, could um, well, before anybody entered his hotel room, the government, got the feds care. were there and confiscated all of his papers. Yep. Yep. J. Ed Edgar Hoover and his boys Edgar. confiscated everything. Yeah. But they didn't waste any time, uh, uh, Dr. Bill, confiscating it. No. They, they barged right in there and took it all. Oh, gee, I wonder why. How about that? So that's about it. So um, let us uh, on this uh, <coughs> special. I don't know if we have time for. Yeah, maybe one. Let's bang one. One About or ten two. minutes. Yeah. All right. But right, because this of Steve, the uh, uh, the witch is familiar. I forgot to hit the stopwatch. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Question. 
as diamonds actually began as coal eons ago, will they burn? George Reeves crushing the coal for uh, Lois Lane. Will they burn? Are they going to make it a big ass diamond for them? Yes. Diamonds can burn. Well, they're they're the hardest hardest known substance, but they're not indestructible. But the circumstances have to be right. And insurance companies can easily distinguish a false claim. However, contrary to popular belief, though diamonds and coal are both forms of carbon, diamonds do not come from coal. No, that well they had a they had to integrate something in, into the Superman series. Diamonds are virtually pure carbon. Really? But coal is full of substances that prevent it from becoming diamonds. Also, for diamonds to <coughs> form, right. carbon requires tremendous amounts of pressure and heat found deep within the earth. Coal is formed from plant debris near the surface. Even the oldest plants are younger than almost every diamond that has been dated. Wow. Well, diamonds, um, as far as reality goes, as far as the uh, South African diamond mines goes, is, is really no longer a precious stone. It's all a game, a game in capitalism. They, uh, they, they control the exportation of tons of diamonds they hold back to keep the price up. Uh, he, uh, as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin stick to buying and selling. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Yeah. For those of you that do not cherry pick from the Bible. Okay, all right, let's see. Do we have time for one? It seems that uh, it seems the holier than thou's have found their spokesman, a three time married adulterer who says he has never asked God for forgiveness. I think the right wing evangelicals have many representatives. The flag wavers who shout USA, USA during the Trump rally the tea baggers, yeah, the tea baggers. Trump pansies, yeah. have found a draft dodger who accuses a kneeling black athlete of disrespecting the flag. Meantime, the president sounds the lie that President Obama did not write letters or call the families of our dead warriors. Hey, wasn't uh, the uh, African-American widow disrespected recently? Yes. He said that was all a lie. Everything they said about him was a lie. But did it really happen? That's what the congresswoman said. <coughs> she overheard the con conversation. <coughs> oh, okay. President Trump continues to make these hateful attacks and engage in other efforts to destroy the legacy and besmirch the character of uh, uh, Barack Obama. I like that word, besmirch. Like cahoots. It's a funny name. Funny the, word. The Trump presidency is the horrible price we are now paying for having elected Obama. Well, it's karma. A man who was everything anyone could ask for in a president. Well, uh, except... Uh, Not when he extended the Bush tax cuts. What about the uh, the whole uh, national security thing with that law that that they can uh, arrest you and uh, stick you in a who's gal and your family may never see you again? Oh. If you're under suspicion. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In other yeah. words, take infringe upon your First Amendment rights, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he wa and what about protesting? Hey, don't forget, the yeah. Republicans were in charge of uh, the House and Senate for most of Obama's six years. For six years. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
let's wrap it up. A Harvard trained lawyer, faithful husband, loving father, religious, compassionate, competent, intelligent, eloquent, and all without drama or a trace of scandal. Uh -huh. It seems it was more than some people could stand having a black man in the White House. Now we see crowds waving the Confederate flag and more outbursts from racists and misogynists, homophobes, xenophobes. Somehow they always come back or they never really leave. Don't forget, Barack Obama has a, a degree in constitutional law. He was that law as a professor. Yeah. yeah. He knows, he, he knows, he knew and knows his shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just surprised he didn't really get tough with uh, people like Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. I mean, I would have gotten real tough with them. I well, would have yeah. went on the media. I would have freaking exposed the whole Republican Party's ass if I was being oppressed and, and unfairly attacked. <laughs> He fell into the same trap that Clinton fell into with, uh, yeah. uh, whatchamacallit. Then. He folded like a cheap camera. Well, he wanted to get things done. And to do that, he had to sell things and, and give things away mm -hmm. that were important. He had to do a little kissy ass. Uh, he had to polish the old right-wing apple. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. That's why he, he made nice-nice with... Uh, the bloated toad, uh, Newt Gingrich. Newt Gingrich, yeah. The Gingrich that stole Christmas. That's it. That's you know? it. Uh, okay, you know what? We'll take a short break. Thanks to Steve. Who is now Steve? Remove your foot, please, sir. Thanks to Steve, who, who won't get the fuck out of the, the studio. Uh-uh. Regarding, did Martin Luther clear the path for Donald Trump? The Reverend Alexander Santora does not provide the major impact of Luther's rebellious act. To wit, if the church had crushed Luther, as it had earlier movements, e.g. the Hussites, etc., we would still be living in the Middle Ages. If Luther had crushed the church, we would also still be living in the Middle Ages. What happened instead was a stalemate, with each side claiming, claiming to have the true interpretation of the Bible and condemning the other side. Thoughtful Christians had no way of knowing who was right or how to prove such a conclusion. Indeed, the fact that each side was dogmatic and only one could be right established the notion that being dogmatic is no proof of anything. That opened the possibility that both sides were wrong. The result was a revival of ancient skepticism which led to mond modernity. The ironic conclusion is that Luther in trying to purify Christianity, actually undermined it, resulting in the secularization of the West. Well, I still side with our, with our founding fathers about keeping church and state separate. Because uh, mm -hmm. no one has proven that their God exists yet. <laughs> yeah. Are we taxed enough today? Well, the middle class certainly is taxed way too much. Not are, the rich. Not the rich. Are we going to continue to elect politicians that appease their base for donations with statements of lower taxes and reduced spending? And then, when elected, continue to vote for higher budgets, more government employment? Please consider the above statements when choosing your candidates. 
consider taking action and voting out the candidates that are same old, same old. Yeah, like all of them. Consider taking action and voting <coughs> on November 7th for the candidates who do not advocate for tax increases, which result in higher taxes for all. Vote for change, not the same old, same old. Uh, the only true change would be for the rich to pay their fair share in, uh, in taxes and for, the, and for the burden to come off of the shoulders of the middle class. And that would be a tax increase. <laughs> uh, for the people that should be taxed. The Zoe And can afford to be taxed. Yeah, the Zoe and who have been on a tax vacation oh, for, for a long time. For over 30 years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't forget, when the rich are taxed heavily, they are still living high on the hog. But when the middle class are taxed heavily, they uh, go. To the economy to goes. Yeah, and and the and the, and the middle class become uh, uh, eventually low income, and then the, and then they enter the poorhouse. Yeah, and then they can't, they can't provide jobs because that's. Yeah. That's who provides 70% of our jobs. Middle, the middle class includes uh, Main Street. Yeah. Small businesses, professionals that hang their shingle up. Yeah. Um, entrepreneurs. Yeah. Small, uh, what, what they call small emerging uh, growth companies. Yeah. For those that are in the uh, mutual fund and, uh. and securities uh, business. You know, uh, the little guy. Uh, the little guy is not just it's the poor sucker Joe six-pack consumer. The little guy is also a small business owner on Main Street. The provider, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people with people that <laughs> that put their surplus cash back into the economy. That's right. Because the uh, the rich don't do that; they invest in things that benefit only themselves rather than investing in a company which would benefit a lot more people that's the basic sure. problem well don't forget don't forget the uh, when when competition was a great thing for capitalism the more competition you have the better products are produced the better yeah. customer service is Exists. Right, but guess what? And lower prices for your products. But guess what? The person who owns that business and is competed against, he doesn't like it. Because he wants to be the only business in town. Monopoly. That's correct. And that's what we have today, monopolies. That's correct. Well, you've got uh, six, I believe it's six. Six companies, corporations now own the media. Yeah, in the and, whole country. And speaking and speaking of craft beer, I'm pissed off that Anheuser Busch, that makes the cheap ass uh, nationally advertised Budweiser, bought out many family owned microbreweries. Yeah, but they got bought out too they by did. foreign a country company. Bought out. I'm not sure whether it was China. Anheuser Busch. Did they send the Clydesdales no, to, the, still to the slaughterhouse for uh, horse, yeah. meat, horse meat burgers? I'm sure Kiyah. they do when they get old enough. Hey, Anheuser Budweiser calling themselves the king of beer is like Donald Trump calling himself the best president and that, he ever, does. Ex that <laughs> ever existed. And he does. And he does. Hey, did you see last week? Last week on. Uh, Saturday Night Live, Baldwin was on. Oh, I got, I got to go to YouTube. I'm, I'm way behind on Alec Baldwin. Yeah, yeah he was on last week. <coughs> no, I missed the last. So did I. Yeah. So did I. I got to check him out. I got to check it out, man. Oh. An alarming study released on Wednesday found many baby food products test positive for arsenic. Now, who, when he came into uh, power, uh, upped the arsenic levels in our food and it was G.W. Bush. That's correct. Do I smell uh, a, a depopulation plan by Ooh. the elitist? 
including 80% of infant formulas. Hey, you might as well kill them when they first come out of the womb, right? Yeah. That's what they're doing. But if you're in the womb, oh man, they'll they'll protect you like like no one else will. Yeah. The right wing. And that's not the only dangerous contaminant found. The Clean Label Project, a nonprofit group that advocates for transparent labeling, tested baby food, infant formulas, toddler drinks, snacks, purchased within the past five months. The group looked at top selling formulas and baby food using Nielsen data and also included emerging national brands. After about 530 baby food products were tested, researchers found 65% of the products tested positive for arsenic. Lovely. 36% for lead, 58% for cadmium. Well, if it was uh, any food from mainland China, they they would be a lot worse. Yes, they would. I remember. We send our chickens to China. They process them, and they send them back to us. Um, let's not forget uh, Jamie Oliver's YouTube videos on uh, fast food hamburgers, like McDonald's. Let's not forget what they do. Uh, to save money, the, the, the greedy bastards, <laughs> you know, take uh, mystery meat, <laughs> uh, meat byproducts, mystery meat, roadkill, whatever the hell you want to call it, <laughs> and uh, disinfect it with ammonia. <clears throat> once it's pateed, once it's ground, it could be anything, That's right. ammonia, and then serve it to the public. And our wonderful government, the the FDA and the USDA that people think cares so much about our safety and our oh, health yeah. Oh, yeah. allows it all to happen. Republican deregulation. Need I say more? All of these chemicals pose potential dangers to developing infants. Jennifer Lowry, pediatrician and toxologist at Children's wow. Mercy Hospital in Kansas City. She's both? Missouri. How about that? Who is not affiliated with the research, said these chemicals can affect fine motor skills and cognition. Oh, the kids are fucked up enough as it is today. Mainstream brands including Gerber, Infamil, Plum Organics, and Sprout were among the worst offenders. Infamil too, huh? Wow. Scoring two out of five in the Clean Label Project's report card for toxic metals. Plus 60% of products claiming to be BPA-free tested positive for the industrial chemical bisphenol. You don't say. The quantities of contaminants range but some products tested positive for up to 600 parts of arsenic per billion. Hmm. Arsenic was the most common contaminant spotted in the study. The toxin is associated with developmental defects, cardiovascular disease, neurotoxicity, diabetes, and even cancer. Well, when I hear that word toxin, I also think of another word. Vaccines. Oh yeah, what happened to that young lady who uh, was thrown in jail because she wouldn't vaccinate her son? Flu shot. Flu shot. Yeah, I'm not. Ta I'm not getting the flu shot. There's no way. After I read all the articles I read. Yeah, of course. And what about the what is it? The Gardasil vaccine for the human papilloma virus? Yeah. My my doctor tells me. It's a lie. No, no young female has died from the Gardasil vaccine. Now, yeah, but if he's wrong, to... if he's lying to me, he's a scumbag. Because yeah, he's... but they want to they want to vaccinate boys too. They want to vaccinate boys. Yeah, they are, are corporations 
also want to start putting the chip into people, into the employees. <laughs> the chip, the infamous chip. There you go. Not chips ahoy, chocolate chip cookies either. <laughs> they want to be able to scan you and track you, no matter where you are. Know everything you're doing, which, by the way, uh, is um, uh, the uh, the Facebook Messenger app that Mark Zuckerberg keeps on pushing, uh, pushing, pushing. Every time I log into Facebook, uh, they claim uh, the articles claim that uh, that everything you do can be spied upon yeah. uh, using your smartphone. Yeah. Everything you do. Even if like you're another you're another Anthony Weiner, I guess you, you they'll see that too. Those are your Weiner? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm surprised Oscar Meyer never hired Anthony Weiner. <laughs> they should be talking. To drive the Oscar Meyer Weiner truck. Now it takes all James P. Madonna to think of clever advertising stunts. Come on. Come on. I should be rolling in dough with my ideas. Go ahead. Jacqueline, Jack, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Yeah, Jack -off. Bowen. Jack -off. Executive director of Clean Label Project and a food safety scientist said, "Wow, three time based foods such as snack puffs had some of the highest levels of arsenic." Damn. Okay. Turn this guy around, yeah. We may have to take an earlier lunch today because of uh, our goof. Because the um, uh, oh, it's two thirty now. Well, or or we can just hang out, kill time because uh, <clears throat> we have to we have to uh, um, plug into the we have to go into the power source after the second video. A letter to the editor in Saturday's paper slightly misstates the origins of the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Sounds like a good article. This is ascribed to a desire by the Founding Fathers to allow the citizenry to protect itself from deprivations of their own government. What actually motivated the Founders was a morbid fear of standing armies and a belief that a military force with nothing else to do in peacetime would concoct mischievous ways to interfere with governance. Hence it was the government that was the intended beneficiary of the amendment. The Founders' solution was an armed body of citizens who could answer the call to arms in the event of danger, as did the Minutemen at Lexington and Concord. Hence the prominent mention in the text of the term malicious. Today, it seems more important than ever to keep these principles in mind. For with the preponderance of professional military types at the apex of government, who arrogate to themselves a status as sacred and above reproach, yeah. our country seems to be on an inexorable slippery slope towards status as a banana republic. We should also remember that the wisdom of our, of our founding fathers was no more cogently displayed than in our country's time of mortal danger during World War II, when our country and much of the world was saved by the greatest generation, which was composed of ordinary citizen soldiers, sailors, and airmen. Well, you know, even the, um, every great civ civilization was corrupted eventually and fell. The Greeks, despite all their wonderful contributions, scientists, 
doctors. Uh, they eventually fell, of course, the Romans. And I think it's time for the United States uh, Empire to... Uh, <coughs> hey, Nikita Khrushchev was right. We will bury you! No, no, not that oh. part. <laughs> the United States will destroy itself from within. Now you look like Miley Cyrus sticking your tongue uh, sideways. You know what Miley Cyrus recently said? She, she said that Satan is actually not a bad guy. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I think she wants to get banged by Satan. I think that's what it is. He has no dick. How does ha how did sweet innocent Hannah Montana turn into this <laughs> this uh, creature? Known as Miley Cyrus, I or she, know. or she just doing it because she's not getting any uh, media attention. She's not relevant anymore. Most hey, likely that one. That could be it. She's yeah. not relevant. Yeah. Like, remember when uh, um, Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin and her little fat pig uh, uh, slut daughter Bristol Palin was relevant? Yeah. 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 We, all we heard was them being mentioned every day. Yeah, yeah. Now they're just history. Here today, gone to Maui. <laughs> I wish I was in Maui. Too bad, Steve. Might as well incorporate Steve into the show as comedy shtick. In this article, Michael Medved makes a valid point that the country has prospered during administrations of mediocre chief executives. Presumably, this should give us hope that our nation may benefit during the term of our current commander-in-chief. Oh, God. To illustrate his point, Medved looks back to the period between the administrations of Presidents Abraham Lincoln and Theodore Roosevelt. He sees this as an era defined equally by presidential mediocrity and national prosperity. He suggests parallels to today and asks, could these recent developments signal that Trump might recapture some of the magic of the Gilded Age? Oh, no. This, <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, Mr. Mueller, is indicting some people today concerning the Russian Trump. You connection. know what? Uh, according to the to internet news and <clears throat> maybe even people like Anderson Cooper and CNN, everything's under investigation. Month after month after month after month after month. I want to see people be brought to justice. Yeah, yeah. Remember when, um, was it Chris... Book them, Daniel! Was it Chris, uh, federal prosecutor Chris Christie that, that, that caught all, all of those New Jersey mayors uh, uh, in, deeply involved in corruption and, had, and they were all arrested? Not the recent ones. Was it? Was it was Chris? Did Chris Christie was a, a, a prosecutor. Did he play a role in that when they caught all not those? Not the recent ones. No, no, no not the recent. older ones. Yeah. Before he be, ever became governor. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And they just clean house. Yeah. That's what I want to see happen. <laughs> clean out, clean out the barn, clean out the barn, like H. Ross Perot used to say. <laughs> I don't see the barn getting cleaned out. The question betrays a stunning ignorance, or worse, betrayal of our nation's history. Magic. Medved points out that during this time, America welcomed more than 10 million immigrants, yeah. but fails to note the conditions. Because they were white. You mean the ones that went to Ellis Island? They were Caucasian. That's why nobody picked on them. Confronting many of wow. these newcomers. I take that back. Crowded as they were into tenements. The Italians got picked on. In the shadows. What about the uh, the Irish? Oh, yeah, the Irish and Hello. the Italians. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. They both yeah. got picked on. Yeah. 
Uh, they were in the tenements and in the shadows of burgeoning cities across the land. Burgeoning, burgeoning Meredith? He, he died, didn't he? The Lower East Side of Manhattan at this time was the most densely populated place on the planet. Heat and running water were scarce. There was no mag magic time for immigrants. Women could not vote. There were no laws banning child labor. This was no magic time for children. It was during this period that Reconstruction ended in the South, thus allowing the states to disenfranchise African American voters and enact segregationist laws, collectively became known as Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. Lynching for flourished. This was no magic time for African Americans. During this period, the federal government also pursued a policy of extermination of Native American peoples. Just because the slaves were free, that, that doesn't mean they were out of danger or living a good life. Exactly. <laughs> By no means. By no means. Uh, you know, and uh, my mother's, uh, one, of my, one of my mother's physical therapists from the Philippines says that, well, people in the Philippines that are dirt poor come here looking for greener pastures. Oh, yeah, sure. A Republican-controlled America, greener pastures for the poor? She laughed her head off when I said this. She says, she, she, she nodded her head, yes, you're right forcibly removing survivors of the Indian Wars from ancestral lands and exiling them to reservations. This was no magic time for Native Americans. Some people did indeed prosper at that time. It was for sure a magic age for the Titans of corporate America. There you go, the Titans, uh, like J.P. Morgan, Carnegie, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, the the initial uh, capitalist scumbags, the founding fathers of of capitalist scumbaggery. I just made that word up. Inaction by the federal government brewed a powerful elixir, fueling the establishment of monopolistic trusts by Wall Street magicians. I like this. I like this writer. Suppressing comp competition. Lowering wages, promoting high prices, Rockefeller's Standard Oil, J.P. Morgan's United States Steel, and the Vanderbilt's New York Central System are but three examples of the resulting widespread restraint of trade. Medved has not served history well. In fact, I am left to wonder if he has ever done much research of any sort. If he had, he might realize the term Gilded Age is not a positive, much less a magical description. Gilding is a paper-thin layer of gold applied over a cheap base in order to make the whole seem valuable. This writer has sort of a uh, poetic, a Michael J. Talmo style. Or, or, may, or maybe surpassing Michael J. Tomo. As once the ostentatious wealth of a few covered the unspeakable misery of the many, today we confront a new Gilded Age. Yeah. Medved's article may apply a thin veneer of respectability over inhuman policies and call it magic. This is not magic. It is simple greed. Yeah. And you know what? It's evil. It's wicked. Uh, oh, I forgot to tell you the third... Uh, okay, the third uh, video can be like 10 or 15 minutes long. So, um, we can pull it off. All right. All right. I have uh, we're going to take a break. We'll, we'll be back. A very short break. Short. Very short. What happened there? Oh, screw him. Screw oh, Steve. Oh, no, me. Go fuck himself. Me? Oh, you. Oh, that's different My then. My chair can't get past. Oh. The clip. Okay. Uh, we're back. Excuse me. 
All right. We're back. This is the last jaunt before lunch. Continue. Okay. <laughs> Sir. The Republican-led Senate narrowly voted on Tuesday to repeal a banking rule that would let consumers band together to sue their bank or credit card company to resolve financial disputes. Oh boy, did I have a whopper with, uh, with Chase when I used to have a Chase Platinum card with a wonderful like 2.9% interest. Mm -hmm. I was late. After several years, I was late like one or two days with a payment. And they jacked me up to almost 30% interest. And I basically got very, very nasty with them on the phone. Ugh. Did they change it? No. Ha! That's why I, I use some very foul language. Uh -huh. In other words, we don't care what you did. Yeah. We don't care You're what gonna you pay. did. That's we all. got you. We got you by the short hairs. That's right. We got you. Vice President Mike Pence cast the final vote to break a 50-50 tie. And let me guess, it was a 50-50 tie going in the wrong direction. That's correct. Nice, the, nice, uh, well, can't blame Pence. I blame, I blame uh, possibly not enough Democrats. Well, that's for sure. You know, they're doing there the right 50 thing. 50 voters against it. <laughs> The banking industry had been lobbying hard to roll back the regulation from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Of course they don't like regulations. Well, that thing was put together by Warren and uh, Barney Frank. Barney Frank, the one with the little bitch titties always sticking out of his, uh, his sweater? He was homosexual, yes. Barney Frank. Oh, no, no. You know, you could be... Uh, yeah. You could be an older gentleman with bitch tits. You don't have to. You don't have to be homosexual. You can be straight. But anyway, he was a he was a Democrat. I don't know uh, if he was a progressive or not, but he was a Democrat. Yeah, and the Republicans have been trying ever since 2008 to change this to, law to undo it all. That's right. Do you remember Daniel? To Pat repeal and replace. <laughs> yeah, with slavery and death to the poor. You remember Daniel Patrick Moynihan? Absolutely. Yes. The, the one with the eyebrows that used to go like up and down? Yes. Yeah. He died, didn't he? Yes, I think so. I think he passed away. He was, a, he was one of those old-fashioned Democrats. Oh, yes. Like, like Ted Kennedy. Ted Kennedy. Like Teddy Kennedy. God rest his soul. The Bureau had moved to ban most types of mandatory arbitration clauses found in the fine print of agreements consumers often enter into when opening a checking account or getting a credit card. Thank God for federal credit unions starting to advertise now. Ah, good thing. Starting to advertise now, yes. yes. The vote reflects the effort of the Trump administration and congressional Republicans to undo regulations that the GOP argues Harms the free market. Undo reminds me of undue sausage. The, kind, of, kind of overpriced for a spicy sausage. And anyway. the measure now moves to Donald Trump's desk for his signature. White oh, House gosh. Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said the president applauded the vote. We're, you know what? This country's in big trouble. You know. I, I don't know. Uh, unless the unless the inbred rednecks uh, uh, see the light or get pissed off enough, <clears throat> that ain't gonna happen. We're what's, in what's, what's gonna happen We're is in trouble. this generation must die. Which generation? The millennials? No, the Republican generation. Oh, the party. The party. This generation In other of words, them. People in look, that party. Th there's too many. Corrupt old motherfuckers that just won't go away because they keep on getting reelected over and over and over again. Yeah. And they keep inculcating this Republican uh, agenda into their children. 
And okay. of course, the people don't have a pot that don't have a pot to piss in. They live in shacks. Mm -hmm. They're, they're, they go they're, along. They're with shot. They're, no, their brains are shot. I, I, I don't think you can rehabilitate them. I don't think you can uh, uh, regenerate their cells and their brain. They're, they're shot. I'm talking about the people that live out, live out w way out of yonder. You know what I mean? Yonder. Like, like let's say, let's take like a, a Wolf Kentucky. County, Wolf County, Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, they're shot. They might as well jump into the into the super volcano at Yellowstone Park. Just jump right in. The rule would harm our community banks and credit unions by opening the door to frivolous lawsuits by special interest trial lawyers, Sanders said. Democratic lawmakers said the CFPB's rule would have given consumers more leverage to stop companies from financial wrongdoing. That's right. We, we desperately need regulations to protect we the people once again. We desperately need that. You notice I'm wearing traditional black for the Halloween special? The Halloween special show? Uh, no, we do not know that. Day of the Dead a loving couple here. Sugar Skulls. All right, go ahead. I don't want to digress. They cited the sales practices at Wells Fargo and the security breach at credit company Equifax. Oh, gosh. As examples of misdeeds protected through forced arbitration. So who does forced arbitration help? Wall Street banks and other huge corporations that never pay the price for cheating working people. Oh boy. Richard Cordray, director of the Consumer Bureau said, tonight's vote is a giant setback for every consumer in this country. Wall Street won and ordinary people lost. This vote means the courtroom doors will remain closed for groups of people seeking justice and relief when they are wronged by a company. Wronged by a company. Uh, a nice way of saying fucked over, ripped off. And no way to uh, seek, to seek retribution, retribution. Rest, restitution, restitution. Whatever, whatever word you want to use. Yes. That's what the Republicans always do. They want they want they, the legal right to 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 suck you dry like a damn vampire. Yeah, to crush you, but never let you crush the big boys. Even though they may be multi-billionaires, they're never wealthy enough. Oh, yes. That's how evil these people are. Just look at photos of Mitch McConnell. And you could see the uh, the uh, the wickedness in the man. You know, Republicans said the arbitration system has worked wonderfully for consumers. They said the payouts for the average consumer in arbitration cases are generally much larger and come more quickly than when compared to the relief gained through class action lawsuits. I like that, that term, class action lawsuit. Is, is that a real big whopper of a lawsuit? That's involving many people. Oh, many, oh many. that means you get less of a payment. Maybe not. Maybe not. Depends on the corporation. Yeah, well, that depends. You know, uh, you know and also, oh. and it means that uh, if you've been wronged, you may not have to appear in court to get that. Like lawsuit. a drug company class action lawsuit. Or uh, let's say like the like the lawsuit against uh, the Morena IUD that embeds itself into a woman's uterus. <laughs> Just an example. Uh, okay. What do you think? You done? No. What oh. am I done? I'm doing it. Did you? Oh, you're not done yet. Well, let's go. Oh, well, wait. You, a well, you're poking a woman's uterus there. Oh no, but I'm saying. Please. How far are you? I got a whole column here. Holy shit, we ain't gonna have time for it. 
Um, all right, give it a the shot. The effort to try to characterize this as I some think. devious system that has been created to try to stop consumers from having access to fairness is simply false, said Mike Crapo, Republican chairman of the Senate Banking Committee. He said, Crapo. Crapo said the average payout for consumers in class action lawsuits against financial companies was just $32. It's a perfect name for a Republican politician, Crapo. Democrats argued that consumers generally don't have the time and means to pursue claims in arbitration. And since most disputes revolve around small amounts, they typically just give up. They said banks and other financial firms know that in the end they won't have to pay a real price for taking advantage of a consumer. But class actions would serve as a powerful tool for consumers. Once again, we're helping the powerful against the powerless, said Senate Minority Leader Chucky Schumer. The two Republicans sided with Democratic lead, uh, lawmakers to keep the rule. Lindsey Graham and John Kennedy of Louisiana. The advocacy group Consumers Union and several veterans groups, including the American Legion, lobbied to keep the rule. They said consumers would still have the option to use arbitration to resolve a dispute if both parties want to go that route. Without the CFPB rule, consumers can be forced into a rigged system where they have no recourse. It's a disgrace! The American Bankers Association cheered the Senate vote. Today's vote puts consumers first rather than class action lawyers, said Rob Nichols, the group's president and chief executive officer. That was a lie. Crapo. Lie. Okay, don't... Crapo, you ready for lunch? Yeah. We're going to take a lunch and right. you, will, you will now see how to defeat a conservative Bible verses, hit the pause button, read and learn, followed by promo. Yes, I did forget the casket for our very special Halloween Day of the Dead show. You believe I forgot the Svengali's casket? Steve, it's his fault. The witch is familiar. The devil's child. The evil cat Steve that was meowing at the beginning totally threw me off. But you'll... I'll bring the casket out for the second half of the show. Well, they do. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. It's your rotten hell, Steve. Hold on, hold on. Let me get out of here one. As much as I can. As much as you can. Because my chair don't correct. swivel anymore. I'm pissed, man. Steve, I, I should take you to a Chinese takeout. Oh, Chicken chow meow. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk 
about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Watch on it now. Okay. Times. You know? Okay. We're back from lunch. I don't even want to mention it, but because there's not a, not a lot of time. Second second bottle of Goose Island India Pale Ale. What I forgot to mention before about um about uh, Tom from Passaic County is that uh, the Social Security Administration. Uh, woman said to him, well, well, why don't you apply for your state Medicaid? Hey, lady, what if you have a Republican governor and what if you have a Republican Washington, which we have, <laughs> and there is no um, Affordable Care Act, there is no health insurance. You know, they always have quick push-button answers to everything that are not, that don't apply to the real world. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not realistic. It's not the real world. But anyway, uh, uh, we're going to see how much we can do here in the second half. Go ahead. You write an email. No reply. You send another email. No reply. You're halfway through a third email and you stop. What happened to the first two? Junk folder? Was the message just ignored? In the 21st century, our inboxes are flooded. According to the Technology Market Research Company, the Radicate Group, the average adult will receive 92 email messages per day in 2017. That doesn't even count the spam that pours into our accounts. The longer we wait for an answer, the more we wonder whether the message was seen at all. Depending on your platform, here are various ways to know <coughs> if someone has opened and read your email. Oh yeah, I was hacked into my Facebook account. I had to change my password. I was hacked into by a, a someone from the Middle East with a Samsung Galaxy phone. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, hey, there you go, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, community standards, more concerned about offending someone and about nudity than they are about keeping out vermin, keeping out hackers and, and um, crooks, crooks yeah. spammers and hookers or whatever. Yeah. Read receipts are much more common than most people realize. Most major email platforms will give you the op option to request return read receipts 
with email that you send. Some will also let you specify these receipts for every email you're composing. Keep in mind that these requests only do half the job. The recipient can still decline and you'll never receive the receipt you're hoping for. Some major email platforms like Gmail, Apple Mail, I like Gmail, for example, yeah. do not officially support the sending of read receipt requests. Really? As an alternative, you can use invisible email tracking and read receipts. But here you'll have to rely on a third party tracking software. For the major uh, email platforms, here's how you set them up. Outlook. To request a return receipt in Microsoft Outlook, click Options on the top menu bar to bring up its submenu. Now, just check Request a Read Receipt to receive a notification when your message is open. Additionally, you can also get notifications when your message is successfully delivered by checking Request a Delivery Receipt. Mozilla Thunderbird. Oh, yeah. In Mozilla's email client, Thunderbird, click Tools on the top menu bar, then click Options. Now on the General tab, click on Return Receipts. <coughs> Here you can configure Thunderbird to always include return receipts with your emails. Yeah, I had many issues with Mo uh, Mozilla Firefox, so I had to leave it. I use Google Chrome. You can also send your own return receipts and the location of your receipts. When done, just click OK. You can also configure Thunderbird return receipts on individual emails. While writing a new email, just click on Options on the top menu bar. Select Return Receipts and or Delivery Status Notification to configure its return receipt setting. Gmail! In the free version of Gmail, you can't request a read receipt. Yeah, what the hell's wrong with the Google Corporation? What's going on here? But the what? feature is available via Google's paid, paid Excuse me. business cloud software, G Suite. Excuse me, I have an itch in the center of my forehead, Google Corporation. Yeah, same thing with Zuckerberg that wants me to spend money to boost every upload on my Facebook page. Paid? Hey, capitalists. Here's my, here, here's my itchy forehead for you. Go ahead. If you are a G Suite subscriber, you can turn on read received requests via the G Suite administration console. Go to Apps. G Suite, Settings for Gmail, then click Advanced Settings. Here you can scroll down to the Email Read Receipt section, where you'll find this wordy option. Allow email read receipts to be sent to all addressees in my organization, as well as the following email addresses. Switch it to all. With this option on, you can click on the lower right down arrow on your Compose window to request a read receipt for the email you are writing. Yeah. Use email tracking software. Maybe you have a small business. Maybe you do. Maybe you're doing research. And you just need to know which emails were open, which were untouched. In this case, you might turn to third-party email tracking solutions. 
Most of these are paid services with monthly subscriptions. Well, I have all of my spam automatically going into a spam folder. And, and, and the, the mail that is unread with me on Gmail is illuminated. So I, I'm happy with what I what I have with Gmail, uh, YouTube. Uh, not YouTube. I'm sorry. Yahoo. Yahoo. Ya Yahoo. Yahoo was way too glitchy, and 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 the page was just too busy for me. It was like everything was all over the place, and I, I had many glitches occurring. But I still have um, uh, a Yahoo account. A Yahoo account. Because uh, when uh, Facebook's community standards terminates your account, you know, the fucking Steve is really a fucking distraction. Mama. These cats really are distracting me of my professionalism. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying before, you know, too many glitches. That's why I'm, I'm with Gmail. All right, go ahead. Finish up. Uh, uh, no, 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 what did I get to know? One basic way to track your emails and get receipts is to get notified. For each message read, you'll receive a notification. You will be notified of the exact date and time the email was read. You'll also receive the recipient's IP address, geographical location, operating system, and which web browser they are using. Get notifies free version caps. Your tracked emails to a maximum of five <coughs> per day and a total of 150 a month. But you can give a small donation. Oh, excuse me, my forehead's itchy again. To remove the daily limit and increase your monthly limit. Small donation. Oh, you, you see that a lot with free software. You see, oh, send us a donation to support. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Mail be, track. Be careful, man. Be careful of, of, of charities this holiday season. Most of them are crooks. Go ahead. Mail track is a browser extension for Chrome. Chrome Dome. Yes. Firefox and Opera. Really? That's designed to work with Gmail. MailTrack's free version offers unlimited email tracking, but your emails will be tagged with a MailTrack signature for about five dollars a month. Hold on, itchy forehead again. <laughs> you can get its pro version <laughs> to remove the MailTrack signature. The pro version also provides tech support, notifications, Usage for three different email addresses. Small, finally, small companies can sign up for the Teams plan, and large companies can sign up for Enterprise. Yeah, I finally remember why I left Mozilla Firefox. They, they don't, re they don't work with Google Hangouts. You um, know, like if you want, if when I when I was going live, you know, from my fiber optics can. Uh, connection, internet connection, um, I'm able to get a good, decent, clear video. And that's how I would have my, my guests from long distances through Google Hangouts video. Uh -huh. But Mozilla doesn't recognize it, doesn't work with it. So I had to go to Google Chrome. Yeah. And wasn't it funny that you couldn't log into Skype last week using your, 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 your known uh, passwords? Password, yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Glitches. Streak is a customer relationship management add-on for Gmail. Their free version has basic CRM features and email power tools. You can track 200 emails a month, which should be plenty for personal use. Streak also has a corporate plan for $39 a month. And an enterprise plan for $89 a month for businesses. Aside from full CRM features, these paid plans 
Also include unlimited and email tracking. Oh, you're actually done with that reading? Yeah. Oh, how about that? Um, the reason why I shook my head a little bit when we went came back from lunch is because... A little well, light on? I don't on. know. Is a little light on? No, no, that's only when you're oh. plugged in. That, it, 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 it wouldn't be the issue. It, in other words, uh, in other words, me staring, me using a, a freaking stopwatch would not be needed if I was able to have an unlimited power source. Um, no, a lot of things have gone wrong mysteriously. A lot of like bad, a lot of bad luck this week with our 2017. All Hallows' Eve, All Souls' Day, and Day of the Dead special show. A lot of weird things have happened. Shit has happened. Yeah. That can't be explained. I think uh, Steve brought the, uh, the demon that uh, caused it. Now I hear there's a cat named Mama. I think they're both of them. Well, Mama's got... You know what? You know what? They should be euthanized. All the cats in this hey. whole region. Well, they're undermining the professionalism of my of this show. All right. Anyway. Well, anyway, what? All right. Now? Go ahead. Next. I got another one here. All right. I I know you do. A key. Moderate Republican urged President Donald Trump on a Sunday to back a bipartisan Senate effort to shield consumers from rising premiums after his abrupt decision to halt federal payments to insurers, calling the move destructive and an immediate threat to access to health care. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that, that there is truly class warfare against the poor. Oh, yeah. By the rich, by the very rich, top 2%. But without a doubt, I'm convinced, I'm convinced of that, and I'm convinced of their depopulation and enslavement plan. And, and Jesse Ventura, when he used to do conspiracy theories, well, he still agrees that this is true. With the president, what the president is doing is affecting people's access and the cost of health care right now, said Senator Susan Collins of Maine, who has cast pivotal votes on health care in the narrowly divided Senate. This is not a bailout of the insurers. What this money is used for is to help low-income people afford their deductibles and their co-pays. Yeah. Congress needs to step in. Yeah, like, like Republicans care about... Well, the, she's one Republican. Oh, Who does? That cares, okay. And I hope that the president will take a look at what we are doing. Her comments reflected an increasing focus on Sunday on the bipartisan Senate effort led by Senators Lamar Alexander <laughs> of Te Tennessee and Patty Murray of Washington to reinstate the payments, at least temporarily, to avoid immediate turmoil in the insurance market, even as Trump signaled he would not back a deal without getting something he wants in return. The payments will be stopped this week. With sign-up season for subsidized private insurance set to start on November 1, the President is not going to continue to throw good money after bad. Give seven billion dollars to insurance companies unless something changes about Obamacare that would justify it. In this, his decision last week, Trump derided the seven billion in subsidies as bailouts to insurers and suggested he was trying to get Democrats to negotiate and agree to a broader effort to repeal and replace former President Barack Obama's health care plan. 
The payments seek to lower out-of-pocket costs for insurers, which are required under Obama's law to reduce poor people's expenses. About six million people to recoup the lost money. Carriers are likely to raise 2018 premiums for people buying their own health insurance policies. Oh, you're like they can afford that. My I, mechanic pays like over, over seven thousand, seven thousand, or nine thousand, a little under ten thousand a, a year. My my mechanic that runs a garage has to pay for his health insurance. Alexander and Murray have been seeking a deal that the Tennessee Republican has said would reinstate the payments for two years. In exchange, Alexander said Republicans want meaningful flexibility for the states. Meaningful, huh? Yeah, the states. Yeah, to right. offer lower cost insurance policies with less coverage than Obama's law mandates. Yeah, they want the poor to drop dead. <laughs> well, they want to give you a low-cost insurance plan that doesn't cover anything. Yeah, like the like this uh, guy told me, uh, working, doing temporary jobs for the ADECO staffing uh, employment agency has, has the shittiest, crappiest, uh, and he works full-time. Only pays like up to like $2,900 for the whole year. That's it. And the rest is 100% out of your pocket. There you go. <laughs> what the fuck kind of a health insurance plan is that? There's your, there's your capitalism for you, teabaggers. There's your, your America. I'm sure. Let me tell you something. There is no way the God of the Bible was behind the United States of America. <clears throat> that is your version of the United States of America. There is no way. Well, you got to understand something. Um, Republicans in our... Sociopaths? In our, no, in our uh, circle of politics mm -hmm. have taken over God. They, they have taken they, it over they, and they force it on you to believe it but they don't believe it. You understand that? It's a bunch of they horse. don't believe it's bunch, it. It's a bunch of horseshit. Right. Their their version. You're talking about the rewritten, cherry picked. I'm talking about it all. Republican Bible. My father used to say that religion. I think it was Stalin also. He said religion is the opium of the people. My father used to say that religion was what the big boys and girls forced on you so that they can control you. Well, Jesse, Jesse Ventura right? says uh, organized religion is for weak-minded people. Exactly. Because they're letting other people do their thinking for them. If it's organized, it's already set up and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you well, the, 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 hey, they... Uh, you know they, the Spanish conquistadors uh, under the uh, Roman Catholic Church at the time, they executed uh, indigenous people in America because uh, of, of of their pagan uh, yeah their pagan beliefs. But their beliefs. pagan beliefs were, were were probably many thousands of years old. And so who were they to come along and and of a better quality? Because they didn't want to hurt the land, they you know they used the buffalo. I mean the bison, well, whatever. Were, well, no, I to mean to feed themselves. All of the Americas, even even the Taíno, even the the original Caribbean natives, they yes, were executed, closer, burnt to the stake. I, I know, but their religions were closer to the ground. Well, closer well, to the earth. It was an earth. Closer religion. to the sky. It was. Uh, they were at one with nature with and with the with the planet. Closer to nature. They yes. cared about the planet. They cared yeah. about the environment. They cared about nature. Whereas the, uh, the uh, conquistadors and all the other conquerors, that's what they were about. Conquering. They were looking for gold. They heard there was gold. The, gold in the Mar Hill. The, uh, 
the legendary city of uh, um, El Dorado and all that. You know? Anyway, yeah. finish up. I, I have no idea if we're offline or not. But Congressional Republicans <coughs> are divided on that effort. White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney has suggested Trump might oppose any agreement unless he gets something he wants such as a repeal of Obamacare or funding of Trump's promised wall on the US-Mexico border. Oh yeah, and to hell to hell with to hell with we the people as uh -huh. long as they have that wall, man. On Sunday, House, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi <sighs> described Trump's demand for a sit down with congressional democratic leaders as a little far down the road. She noted the bipartisan effort in the Senate and said ultimately it will be up to a Republican-controlled Congress and executive branch whether the federal government can avert a shutdown by year's end. And the answer to all of this before we say so long so long. is please everyone, every, everyone who can legally vote in the United States Regardless of how old you are, or what race you are, or what gender you are, everyone must vote this November 2018. Vote out the Republicans, please. That's all I have to say. Thank you for joining us. I don't know if we're, we're being recorded or not. Thank you for joining us for our special show for All Hallows' Eve. All Souls Day and the Day of the Dead 2017. Have a safe um, and fun autumn holiday week. And keep an eye on your children. Escort them, please, when yeah. they trick or treat. And check their candy. Oh. Please check their candy.